Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. We're going to look at question three, which is a 30 mark question on logarithms. So part A of the question is worth 10 marks. And we're told that when a student was trying to solve for x in the following equation, they gave the following solution. Now we're asked to identify two errors the student made and then we have to outline the correction in each case. We don't actually have to solve the equation though. So let's have a look at the logarithm rules first of all. And these are on page 21 of your formula and tables book. So the logarithm rules are down the center and on the right hand side here. And I recommend getting to know these rules as the logarithm questions often require us to be able to implement these rules. So we're going to make sure that all of these rules were followed in the, in the student solution. And then if they weren't, that will be our error. And we have to find two errors. So let's go back now and have a look. So two log a of x is equal to log a of 25 minus log a of nine. And then on the next step, they get two log a of x is equal to log a of 16. That's a mistake. So that's mistake number one. Let's write that down. So that's saying that log a of 25 minus log a of nine is not equal to log a of 16. So let's go back to our formula tables book and let's have a look at the proper way to do that. So the one we're gonna look at here is the second rule, which is when you're taking one logarithm away from the other. So we're going from right to left here. So we should have log a and then the first value over the second value. You don't actually minus both values. So let's implement this now as our correction. So then we can write log a 25 minus log a 9 is actually equal to log a of 25 over nine. And that's the correct way to do that sum. So that's our first error. So now let's go back up and see if we can find a second error. So then the next line of that then was two log a of x is equal to log a of 16. And then that follows that log a of x must be equal to log a of eight. However, this is incorrect. So that's where our second mistake is. So they had two log a of x is equal to log a of 16. And then they've divided the whole thing by two. However, when you're dividing a logarithm by two, you don't divide the number after the log. So in this case, you don't divide the 16 by two, you divide the whole thing by two. So in this case, it'd be log a of 16 over two. However, there's a much easier way to do this. So let's write that down as our error, first of all. So let's have a look at our formal tables book again to see what the correct way to do this is. So this time it's gonna be the third rule down, which says log a of x to the power of q is equal to q times by log a of x. Now we have two log a of x, and we can simply see that that's gonna to go to log a of x to the power of two. And that would be the correct way to do that sum. So that's our answer for part a of the question. And now we're gonna move on to part b. So b part one is also worth 10 marks, and we're given f of x, g of x, and then h of x. So f of x is just ln of x, gx is equal to three x squared plus one, then h is x, and then h of x is the composite function, so it's gx into f of x, which is basically just you're putting the function g of x into the function f of x. So you're putting gx in place of x in the f function there. So the first thing we have to show is that h of x plus h of minus x is equal to gx squared into f. So let's try that now. So we work out h of x first. So if h of x is basically just putting g of x into the function f of x, so that's gonna give me ln of three x squared plus one. And now I'm gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be h of minus x, which gives me ln of three times by minus x squared plus one. However, remember that any number squared is always positive, which means that we can get rid of the minus x. So that's what's gonna be ln of three x squared plus one again. So now we can add both of these together to give us ln of three x squared plus one plus ln of three x squared plus one. And we can use our logarithm rules to simplify this down. So this time it's the first rule. So when you're adding two separate logarithms together with the same base, you can just multiply both the numbers after the logs. So in our case, we have ln of three x squared plus one plus ln of three x squared plus one. So our x and y are both the same, it's three x squared plus one. So that's gonna give us ln of three x squared plus one times by three x squared plus one. And three x squared plus one by three x squared plus one is just the same thing as three x squared plus one squared. So that means that h of x plus h of minus x is equal to ln of three x squared plus one squared. And now we have to do the composite function g of x into f of x squared. So then we have to show that that's equal to g of x squared into f of x. So we're gonna do g of x squared first and then put that into f of x. So g of x is three x squared plus one. 
So I'm just going to square that. And that's going to go into f of x. So which means that f of g of x squared is equal to ln of 3x squared plus 1 squared. And there we have it that h of x plus h of minus x is equal to g of x squared into f of x. Both are equal to ln of 3x squared plus 1 squared. So that's your answer for B part 1 of the question. And now we're going to move on to the final part of the question, B part 2. Here we have to find the coordinates of the stationary point of h of x. And this part is also worth 10 marks. So to find the stationary point, we're just going to put the first derivative equal to 0. So remember again that h of x is equal to ln of 3x squared plus 1. So we're now going to have to differentiate that. So remember when you're differentiating the natural logarithm, you just put 1 over the number after the log, and then you're going to multiply that by the differentiation of that particular number. So in our case here, it's going to be 1 over 3x squared plus 1 times by the derivative of the numbers. So the derivative of 3x squared plus 1 is just going to be 6x, which gives 6x over 3x squared plus 1. So that's the first derivative, and then we've put that equal to 0 to find the stationary points. So to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to multiply 3x squared plus 1 on both sides. So the denominator will just cancel with the 3x squared plus 1 on the left-hand side, and then 0 by any number is just 0. So we get 6x is equal to 0. This means that x must be equal to 0. However, we have to find the coordinates. So I'm going to put 0 back into the function to find the corresponding y-coordinate. So h of 0 is equal to ln of 3 times by 0 squared plus 1, which is just equal to ln of 1 as 3 times 0 squared is just 0, and ln of 1 is also 0, which means the coordinate of the stationary point is 0, 0. So that's our answer for B part 2 of the question, the final part of the question, and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.